second value, <clears throat> pardon me, that, uh, that I think is, is worth mentioning when we talk about this, this event, this Black Hawk Down story, is really this value of courage. You know, personal courage, moral courage, we all have a different definition. You know, what do you, what do you call courage? What frightens you and how do you, how do you combat that? How do you fight it? How do you do the right thing? I mean, a million definitions from all of us in here, and I'll tell you, you know, my simple, simple definition of courage is doing what needs to be done when you're scared. I mean, that's it. They're plain and simple. You know, it's easy to do the right thing when you're not scared, but when you're really scared and someone says you got to go do it again, that's kind of what tests your mettle. That's what's really going to find out what you're made of. And, uh, and that's a hard thing to do. You all know life is hard enough just doing it, let alone in battle. And if I could, you know, if I could change history or change the way my life has gone or, or anything, I would tell you, you know, that there, there is no justice in Hollywood. You know, because if there was justice, it would not be Matt Eversman as one of these main uh, characters in, this, in a movie or the introduction on a book by a best-selling author. I mean, complete random event for me to stand here. But it's an honor to stand here and address you and tell you about these things because of all the great, great men that I served with. And if you're going to watch this movie or read the book, I would tell you, you should watch it for this particular story. You know, those of you that have seen the movie already or read the book, you know this. We, we had a helicopter. We went in on a raid in the middle of the day, caught the bad guys, rolled them up, waiting for extraction. One of our helicopters gets shot down. Media change of mission. Now we've got to move over to this crash site and literally, you know, a race against the enemy to who's going to get there first. And while all this is going on on the ground and we're committing all our resources and we got our search and rescue teams out and ground forces moving and our, you know, reserves called out, uh, unbeknownst to me at the time on the ground, another helicopter takes an RPG and crashes at another location. Two helicopters down, you know, no forces left. To go after it, you know, what do you do? Again, who could who could dream up such a unbelievably Murphy's Law type scenario? But yet it happened. So while we're fighting on the ground trying to get to this first crash site, and guys are, are literally, you watch the movie. I mean, they're running down the streets under fire trying to get there. All our forces committed. We have one little Black Hawk. If I say little, I mean you all know, take it in the spirits intended. We got one Black Hawk circling overhead. Sniper aircraft, it's a platform, our aerial sniper delivery system. You know, the bolt action guys up there doing their thing. And they see this. You know, they got a bird's eye view. They see this and immediately call to the command, the C2 bird, and say, hey, you know, we need to get in on the objective. And they're immediately denied. Immediately. We'll not put another helicopter on the ground. We are, will not do it. Continue to do what you need to do while, you know, we, we figure out another, another answer. Time's going on, enemies are gathering, bad guys are coming after it. They know this is a prize. Second time, snipers like to get in on the objective. Nope, will not do it. Two times denied, will not, will not put another bird in. Crowds are gathering, enemies is, is, is anxious to get after it. And finally, the third time, they request to be inserted and uh, the command says yes, they put them in. On the insertion, these two snipers, you know, flying in on towards the objective of the second crash site. Door gunner gets shot. One of the snipers gets up, pulls him out of the way. He gets in the, in the door gunner's seat to engage the enemy, provide security now. He gets shot too, winds up losing, eventually losing his leg, doing a job he just decided to do because the guy got hurt. So now we've got two guys, Gary Gordon and Randy Shugart, get on the ground about 100 yards away. They fight their way up to this crash site. Pilot is in bad shape, I think broken back and um, you know, broken leg, a, a horrible, you know, horrible thing. Wheels down landing, uh, pretty, pretty rough. Crew is either dead or expectant right there. Gary Gordon and Randy Shugart, they, they move the pilot to safety, get the weapons cannibalized from the 
from the uh, cockpit. And then they just hunker down and they stay and they fight to protect this soldier until they can't fight anymore. You know, eventually they're overrun. Both these uh, magnificent warriors are killed protecting someone who could. And for their actions, they were both, Gary Gordon and Randy Shugart, were awarded the Medal of Honor, as, and rightly, rightly so, just like the stories you're going to hear in a little bit. And I thought about that, obviously, what, a, what, a, what an honor to, to share that story, certainly to be a part of a force of men of that caliber. And I think, you know, after that, you know, after that fight, trying to make sense of it all, the, uh, the chaplain from the 160th got everybody together, had a little homily, talked about courage. And he gave a little briefing, a little, a little, little, little lecture, excuse me, a little sermon, um, and it was from the, the book of Joshua. The story in Joshua, you know, Moses has been chosen to be, or uh, Joshua has been chosen to be Moses' successor, and he's pretty scared about it. He doesn't want, you know, big shoes to fill. I'm not going to do it. And uh, it's like, no, Lord, I can't do it. I'm scared. And as I paraphrase this, you know, there's this back and forth. The Lord says, hey, you need to do it. And Joshua's like, no, I can't do it. And, you know, the Lord says, no, you know, be strong and be courageous, for I am with you. You're being scared is all right, but, you know, you got to put that somewhere else. You got to go out and do your mission, because I am with you. And I've thought often about, you know, what these two or three experienced snipers, these special operators, were thinking on the way in. And, you know, we could, we could never guess to presume to know what, what they knew or didn't know or thought or didn't think, you know, going in on this mission. Did they know it was a one-way kind of thing? I mean, they certainly knew what, you know, the battlefield was looking like. But yet they did it anyway. And were they scared, you know? It'd be unnatural not to be. But yet, these two brave, brave men jumped right into the mix, got in harm's way, doing something that's not like a metal task. It's not like their mission. I mean, helicopters down, we got to go protect them. That's it. And off they went. I mean, that is courage. And if there is one reason that you ought to read the book or see the movie, it's to hear that story. Gary Gordon and Randy Shugart. So I, I give, uh, give Jerry Bruckheimer high marks for, for showing that thing. Because that is certainly a value that we all, and particularly this blessed group of veterans that I have, or we have here today, are all courageous, courageous men. And I thank you for that. Uh, makes us all strong.